Now, if you haven't noticed, in today's world, you've got to be a DIYer because services, well, they can be really expensive. In today's video, I'm going to show the beginner how to install a mini split and save a little money in the process. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, wait, wait, I'm a DIYer, Leah. I've got some skills but I don't think I can put in a mini split. Well, I gotta tell you, today's video is for you because I'm gonna show you in today's video some workarounds that will get you installing a mini split in your home and still saving some money doing it. So why don't we just, well, we're gonna jump right into it. I wanna thank Tosto for sponsoring today's video. Hi everybody, I'm Leah of CJ Drill. And at the top of the video, well, I talked about installing a mini split. Now here's the thing, we're at the ugly house today. And even though the ugly house has central air, there's one room in the house and it's the room I'm sitting in right now that just doesn't benefit from the central air. In fact, it's rather toasty in this room right now. During the summer months, it can be miserable in this room. So we're gonna be installing a mini split and you may have a similar situation in your home where there's that one room that no matter what you do, you just can't cool it off. Or maybe there's just one room in the house that you want air conditioning in. Well, today's your video. And if you're thinking, Leah, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm good at DIY, but I'm not an expert. I, I'm not certain I can do this. I want you to relax, take it easy, because I'm gonna show you a couple workarounds that it's gonna make it possible for you to install a mini split and still save money. So why don't we get started? I'm gonna be installing the Tosot 18,000 BTU mini split with the two-way ventilation system. Now our Tosto mini split has an option that you can add and what it is, is it's this right here. It's a two-way ventilation system and it's easy to install. Actually, it just attaches right to our evaporator and it sits on a bracket next to it. And so I'm gonna be also installing one of these today. Now what you have is you have two large components of a mini split. You've got what's called the evaporator and you have a condenser or a compressor. Now the evaporator, which is what this is here, we place that on the wall inside. But the condenser or compressor, well that goes outside. Now to mount our evaporator here, we need to place it on a cleat system. And they provide that, it's attached right to the back of the evaporator, and this is it. So you attach this to the wall and then the evaporator sits on it like a cleat. Now I want to tell you this, before we put our bracket up, you know, the cleat that our evaporator rests on, we have to drill a hole. We have to drill a hole in this wall and it's going to be sizable because the evaporator, well, it's kind of got to talk to the condenser that sits outside. What I mean by that is there's a signal wire, that's what this is, and then there are a couple of coolant lines that we hook up to the evaporator that we run through the wall and then hook up to our condenser. So we've got to drill a pretty big hole through this wall before we even think about putting the cleanup. Now I'm drilling through cinder block and to do so I'm using a carbide hole cutter. But if you've got a timber home with wooden studs and lap siding, well you're going to want to use a hole cutter that's intended for wood. Now the reason you drill at an angle is because along with the coolant lines and the signal cable is a drainage line and you want that water to drain away from the unit so you want to drill at an angle. Now this is what we want to do. We want to give that whole nice finished look. So what I have here is I have an escutcheon and this is a one and a half inch drain pipe that I've attached this escutcheon to and it'll also give our coolant lines and our signal line a clear path to the outside. All right, I've started to attach my bracket to the wall, but I want to tell you something, and it's this. Even though we have plaster here, beyond the plaster, of course, is the cinder block, right? And that's what we're really attaching to. We're not attaching to the plaster because it's not going to have enough of a hold. 
So what I'm doing is I'm using tap cons to tie into that cinder block. Now what you're gonna need is, you're gonna definitely need a hammer drill and you need to drill pilot holes first before you even think about installing the tap cons. If you have drywall, you're going to want to use a stud finder to locate the studs so that when you screw the mounting plate in, you're attaching to something solid. Now right here is our evaporator. I'm going to lift the cover to it because what we have to do is we have to hook up our signal wire. And to do that, there's a little cover plate right here. Now I've already undone the screw. I'm just going to lift the cover plate out. It just comes right out just like that. Also, I want to bring to your attention that on the cover plate, there is a wiring diagram that you can follow. Now, here's the thing. We need it to get to this right here. Now, what is it? It's the terminal block, and that's what we attach our signal wire to. Now, at the beginning of the video, I talked about how the evaporator, it's got to communicate with that outdoor unit, the condenser or the compressor. Okay, we've come around to the back side of the unit. I want to show you exactly where you need to fish that signal cable through. You want to go to the top of the unit, where my hand is. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to point directly to the route you want to take. We're going to take our cable and we're going to fish it right through here. Now it's time to connect our wires to our terminal block. Now you want to make certain that you go with the corresponding colors on the block. For example, our first wire here, that's brown. So we're going to want to connect our brown wire to the number three terminal. Then black and then blue. Now our ground goes here. This is where our ground goes, right on that terminal. This wire here is yellow and green. All right, we're looking at the back of the unit. This is our signal wire that we just attached. Now what we have to do is we have to attach our coolant lines and our drain lines. Now our drain line is right here. I'm gonna take an open-ended wrench like this. I'm gonna place it right on this nut because what I have to do is I have to remove these plastic caps. I'm able to twist that off by hand. Now, if you hear a little air, don't worry about it. That's absolutely normal. So there we go. This one I can just remove by hand. It just screws off very easily. There we go. Okay, it's time for us to join our lines together. We've got the lines that are attached to the evaporator, and then we have the lines that we're gonna fish through the wall to the outside. Now we have to join the two together, and to do that, we have to remove the caps. Just use a flathead screwdriver to wedge those things off. Now we're going to use a little nylon blue for our connections, compatible with all refrigerants, and it's not going to contaminate the system. So let me do that. Now you don't apply it to the threads, we're just going to apply it to the face here. You don't have to use this, but it's just something that I prefer to use. Now let's join the two together. Large line to large line, small line to small line. Now with the tape they provide, wrap the coolant lines and the drainage lines. Make it compact enough so that you can fish it to the wall without any resistance. Now I'm going to tell you this, clear saline. This stuff is easier than you know. Don't be intimidated by something unfamiliar, all right? Now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to feed the signal cable and the coolant lines through along with the drain. I've removed the scooch end because it's a split of scooch end. It's going to make it easier for me to feed that line through, right? So I've got it through. And here's where it would pay to have a helper. Maybe they could be on the opposite side of the wall pulling on the line as you feed it through. Now here's the thing. I've got the evaporator. That's the inside unit. I'm going to put it up on the cleat. Now right now, I've got it positioned atop a ladder, but I've got to tell you this, you really need help at this point. Not that the inside unit is heavy, it's awkward. So if you can get somebody to help you, put it up on the bracket, it's going to really help it go a lot more smoothly. 
Now it's time to install our outdoor unit, our condenser. And this is when the workarounds come into play, where you don't have to have expert skills, but you still wind up saving money with the install. Now first, before I get to that, we have to secure the condenser to a concrete pad. Now how I'm gonna do that is with concrete screws. I've already drilled my pilot holes and that's gonna give it something to grab hold of and make a secure connection with the compressor and the concrete pad. Now it's time to install the signal wire to the condenser, to the outside unit. They make it really easy. They give you a wiring diagram to follow and you know the wires are numbered just like they are for the indoor unit. All right, what you're looking at, this is a quick disconnect box. It's electrical. You've got to have one of these for the outside unit. Now, what I want to tell you is this. I'm really comfortable working around electricity and really confident in my skills, but I'm not an electrician. And you may not feel confident and comfortable working around electrical components like this. And this is where you can save a little money if you install most of the uh, mini splits yourself, you can always call an electrician in to have them do the electrical wiring that you need. Install one of these quick disconnect boxes and hiring an HVAC technician to hook up your coolant lines. You'll save money by installing most of the unit yourself, but with those things you might feel a little uncomfortable with, you can always call in somebody to do those things and still wind up saving money. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Let's turn it on and see. Oh, it's blowing nice, cool air. All right, folks, it's been a few days since I installed the Toso Mini Split and its accompanying ERV system. And I want to share with you what I like about it and what I've learned about it. Now, what do I like? Well, I gotta tell you, I, I definitely like the remote. I don't know, maybe I'm lazy, but there's just something about being able to control all the functions of an appliance remotely. Or you can turn it on by way of your smartphone. And it's as simple as that. Now, one of the things I want you to keep in mind is it's not just an air conditioner. This is also able to heat a space. It's a heater as well. The other thing I like is the fact that it's so very quiet. So if you place it in a bedroom, you don't really have to worry about it disturbing your sleep at all. Now, the third thing was this, and I realized this right off the bat, and that was the fact that, well, the directions are really comprehensive. They provide directions that are easy to follow, and even if you don't know anything about mini splits, you can be able to follow the directions quite easily because they're, well, they're well written. Now, what have I learned about the unit? Well, it's got a lot of power to it, 18,000 BTUs, but it's really energy efficient. And then the other thing is I didn't realize the space it could well cool and heat over 1200 square feet. That's pretty doggone good. I'm going to place a link in the description below to the Toso mini split and ERV along with the 20% discount so you can check it out for yourself. How to install an ERV with a mini split. I can breathe a lot better in this room because the air is fresher and cleaner since I installed the, well, the ERV system along with the mini split. And you know what? It did it. It cleaned the air without wasting energy or money. Toso provides a few template options depending upon the model of the mini split you're installing. The template provides a visual and an accurate placement for the mounting brackets and where to drill the holes for both the mini split and for the ERV. Now fresh air pipes attach to the unit and allow fresh air in and stale air out. Now the power of the ERV access the wiring board which is located next to the terminal block in the evaporator. Insert the blue terminal into the wiring port, which is labeled in air. 
Once the connection is made, carefully place the wiring board back into the evaporator. There are knockouts on the side of both the ERV and on the evaporator, which provide a clear path for the wire to pass through the evaporator and be connected to the ERV. The plates are removed really easily, folks. Just score them first with a razor blade and then carefully twist them out with a pair of pliers. Next, make your connections for the evaporator to the ERV. Place the unit on the bracket and the last thing you need to do is mount the rainproof joint to the outside of the house. This is Leah saying you can do this. See you next time. Now if you want to see more videos like this one here, just click here.